Hey guys, Jim here with a very, very special knife for you today. And uh, wow, I, I've had a lot of requests since I got this a couple of weeks ago from everyone on Instagram to finally make a video. Calm your tits. It's here. All right. So sit down with your calm tits. Hold them down. Check this out. This, my friends, is a Hellraiser from... Red Horse Knife Works, Mr. Ed Kim. This is the Black Death variation. So it is a fully custom knife. And I'm stressing that because what Red Horse Knife Works does is they make mid-tech knives. They, they're a lot like uh, Ferrum Forge where even the mid-techs lean very heavily over to custom. Uh, but they do have everything water jet and then they sit down and they do the rest of the work. So it is technically a mid-tech. This, however, oh, oh, this is a custom. Oh, and it's so, oh, fuck, it is so amazing. Truly, literally, I vibrated with excitement when I first opened this up. Now, you guys know I have uh, gotten a chance to show you a couple of Red Horse knives, the War Pig and the Chopper. Um, I still own my Chopper. I love it. I think it's awesome. This... Oh, this completely overshadows the chopper. I mean, there's there's no comparison. And it's something that's not entirely practical. It's not what you would consider a standard EDC knife. It's pretty way out there, as a matter of fact. And the reason why it's called the Hellraiser is because it really does give you the look and feel of a straight razor as close to a straight razor as can be had in a pocket knife configuration. <laughs> oh God, I love this thing. And every person that I've handed it to has gone, holy shit, this is probably the craziest knife I've ever held. And that says a lot because there is some crazy shit out there. Let's close this back up. Oh, it, the action is so sweet. And look at the workmanship that goes into it. Now, if you look at a traditional standard Hellraiser in titanium and G10 on the liner lock, you're looking about 500 bucks. That's where they begin. And then every option that you add raises the price. You know, like they generally come with G10. This is a special, very rare carbon fiber called pearl carbon fiber it's actually uh, offered by AJ composites we used to know them by the name uh, ghost carbon fiber now they're called AJ composites uh, it is a shred carbon fiber with a pearlized finish that it's not easy to replicate here under my studio lighting but outdoors in natural light you see the shimmer a very deep pearlescent shimmer that's gorgeous so you go from G10 to a bolstered carbon fiber and zirconium. So you're adding a lot of cost there, just going into the zirconium. You go from standoffs to a custom made backspacer. Custom sculpted titanium clip. Custom thumb disc. These tr traditionally have a thumb stud. Instead of having the thumb stud, it's the thumb disc. Additional jimping. Really nice detent on this, by the way. It's exceptional. The finish work on this, everything being done by hand. One of my favorite areas of the knife, let me just show this to you. Right there. Right at the tip of the blade. The bevels that he's done right there at the edge. It is absolutely amazing. It's a very sharp blade, and it's ground in a way that I'm not used to. It is a V-grind, so you do have a grind on both sides. However, the final edge is done as a chisel, so you only have that secondary bevel on this side. So on this side, it's just the single primary bevel, zero ground to the end. And on this side, basically a back bevel to create the secondary. It is extremely sharp. I don't know that I would call it razor sharp, uh, but it is extremely, extremely sharp. 
Look how thick, by the way, these liners are. All titanium liners, nicely satin finished. Very clean, very beautiful. Very solid lockup. Uh, the handwork, the file work that's been done here to create that jimping works perfectly. It really, really works great. Very easy to access the lock. I've had zero issues with that. It's a little bit different to open this than most knives. A lot of knives uh, I would typically kind of push more forward than out. This one you're really pushing out, straight out. And it flings open. I do believe it is on caged bearings. CPM 154 steel. You can pay extra for different steel. If you want Damascus or Dama steel or um, S90V, whatever it is you want, Ed has access to everything and he's happy to make anything that you want. As a matter of fact, I texted him just uh, yesterday and I said, you know what? I am completely addicted to this knife that I want to make an opposite version. I want to make so we have the Black Death here and I want to make, uh, we'll call it the Angel Wing. I want something that's bright and you know white pearl and stuff like that where it's the complete opposite of this theme. I am madly in love with this knife and I, I knew I would like it but I didn't think I'd like it this much to the point where I honestly have trouble carrying something else. Every time I reach into one of my uh, knife boxes and I go to pick what I'm going to carry for the day, when I come across this knife, I have a really hard time not putting it in my pocket. And I didn't think I'd be like that. It's not a real EDC. It's not going to have the same practicality as, say, a Sebenza or a Dauntless or uh, anything along those lines. You know, it's, it's a, it's a crazy-ass blade. You know, it really is. However, because of the shape of it, it's a great slicer. It's going to be a great chopper. There's probably a hell of a lot of stuff that you could do with this blade. Somebody had stated on Instagram they were worried about this severe notch that's cut out of it, that it was going to somehow weaken the blade. Listen, you're not going out and batoning this. This is not that type of knife, okay? Um, but for... Anything that a normal human being is going to put this through, I wouldn't worry about that at all. It's not a chopper. It's not for batoning. It's a fucking carry knife, man. It's a secondary form of self-defense. It's a great box cutter. It's, you know, that kind of good stuff. Your everyday tasks. Should you need something a bit beefier than that? Well... Get a chopper, get a, uh, get a war pig, get one of their other knives. This one is simply meant to be badass. It is a badass statement. And I've seen the Hellraiser before, and it didn't really jump out at me as much as the chopper did. I don't really know why. But once I saw this configuration... I knew I had to have one, and luckily, uh, through the friendship that I've forged with uh, Ed over the past couple of years, he says, listen, I want to send it out to you, I want you to evaluate it, give me your feedback, tell me what you think, and I got it here, and I said, uh, fuck you, you're never going to see this knife again, <laughs> I am buying this knife, there is no way I can live without this knife in my collection, and I really don't feel quite that attached to very many knives especially in this price range. So, he says, okay, fine, you know, here we go. I put up some pictures, because I, I, it was one of those knives, again, that I was so addicted to, that I immediately wanted to take pictures of it. Put the pictures on Instagram, and Ed texts me, he goes, holy shit, I am getting bombarded with emails, people wanting to buy your knife. And uh, he says, I'm going to make a small run. I think he said he's going to make eight more. That's it. So there'll be nine total plus whatever he makes for himself to carry. And that's it. I don't know if they're all sold yet. I'm pretty sure they are because it was like a week ago that he uh, kind of let people know, okay, I'm going to make eight more. And he'll make them identical to this. So they're probably all gone, but you know, you're more than welcome to contact him and see. But remember the Hellraiser, 
not exactly the Black Death version, but the Hellraiser itself is is a is a standalone model that is always in their collection. It's always ready to be sold, and you can contact them and go, okay, I either want the frame lock or I want the liner lock. I want to switch out the steel. I want a thumb disc instead of a thumb stud, and I want you know maybe it's all zirconium, maybe it's friggin' black mother of pearl, whatever it is that you want, he'll do. So. Maybe you're looking at this going, that's pretty badass, but I think I could do better. I could pick better materials. I think I could go a little bit crazier. Well, you're certainly welcome to do that because he makes that available to you. Let's give you some nice tight shots here. It's got a nice high finish on that satin by the way it's got a nice bit of reflectivity and he's done a nice polish up here where the holes are really nice polish on the spine he did crown the spine so it's uh, got a nice curve to it the thumb disc is custom anodized titanium has almost the look of Timascus he has repeated that same look in the custom anodized pivot set into a beautiful mirror polished zirconium bolster nice flow from the zirconium to the carbon fiber everything really well done look at that beautiful great work on those liners that is thick and solid bitches look at that mm. and that pearl carbon fiber there you go. There you go. Now you can see some of that sheen. Holy, oh man. Oh, my pants are getting tighter every time I look down at that frame. That's gorgeous. There's the custom backspacer with my fingerprints all over it. There are only two things that I would change on this knife if I could. One, and if it couldn't be done, I understand, but I would definitely have done uh, hidden hardware. If not, I would have used black screws just to make them blend in with the carbon fiber and definitely would have blind screwed the clip. Definitely would have blind screwed the clip. But other than that, and that is nitpicking. That is nitpicking for the sake of nitpicking. That's the knife is so fucking perfect. I, I got to find something. I got to find one little thing to pick apart on it. There you go. Is it the most practical knife you're ever going to carry? Hell no. But that's what we've got our practical knives for. They're already in your collection. You need to step outside of the box every now and then. And just do something wild and crazy. You know, the same reason I own a Halo 5. That's so far beyond fucking practical, it's not even funny. But it's cool as shit, and I enjoy the hell out of it. Am I going to carry it every day? Oh, hell no. But when I do, I really do enjoy it. Same way with this, except I'm going to carry this a hell of a lot more often. And it's not wildly impractical for me and my purposes. And I love pulling something like this out and flicking it open and watching people's jaws drop. So if you want a jaw dropper, possibly even a panty dropper, this could be it. Oh, that conjures up really bad images, doesn't it? You pull out a knife and you force her to drop her panties? That's, that sounds like a felony, my friends. I, I don't think I'd take that route. But maybe if it's a woman that you know that really, really, really loves knives, she pulls it out of your pocket and goes, oh, and drops her panties, then it's okay because then it's consensual. And that's all right. We went off really far in, in the wrong direction there, so let's let's kind of uh, pull it back in. I haven't shown you the look of this folded up yet, have I? Take a look at this. Look how fucking beautiful that is. I don't care what angle you view it from, it's striking. So if you're looking for something wildly different, Get yourself into one of these. And it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be the Black Death Edition. Just get yourself any Hellraiser. 
and I promise you it's going to be an experience unlike any other. Thank you, Ed, my friend. I really, really appreciate you sending this out to me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to purchase it, and thank you for making more for everybody else because I honestly believe you would have had a riot on your hands had you not made a few more available. I'll see you guys on the next video.